Hello all and welcome to Wow well Crochet yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous beanie for Father's Day. Oh, I managed to fit something in. I was really worried we were going to miss out. Father's Day is this Sunday coming by the way guys and I hadn't made anything for Father's Day this year so I really thought uh oh we've missed out on doing something for Father's Day. However, it is gender friendly. If you have a careful look at that, as a woman, I would wear those colours. And you know why? Because they are black and grey. Uh, so they're gender friendly. And I used the moss stitch to do the beanie. Of course, we had some ribbed uh, border there, which is good. We started off uh, crocheting the ribbing and then we went on and did the moss stitch. I mean, gorgeous. And a moss stitch. Why I like to make the moss stitch for uh, men, it just reminds me of bricks. And for some reason, bricks remind me of men. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, a brick laying issue or whatever it is. <laughs> don't ask me why, but it does. So I thought, how gorgeous is that? Having said that, yours truly would wear this colour. <laughs> And I would wear a moss stitch beanie as well. So it is gender friendly. So even if you didn't want to make it for your father or a man in your life, you could make it for the lady in your life as well. Gorgeous. <laughs> now, best part, guys, we didn't use a lot of yarn at all. Altogether, that's 109 grams. These two skeins were the skeins I used for the man beanie. Oh, what? <laughs> so you now have the man beanie and this beanie for dad. So there you go. I used the exact same skeins. I didn't run out of them then and I haven't run out of them now. So I tell you what, I really don't take much at all to make these beanies, all right? So I reckon uh, about 50, uh, 60 grams worth from this one, from your black and from your gray, maybe 40, 40 grams, maybe less even. Very minimal it took for this beanie. It's not a tall beanie. It's a beanie that will actually just fit dad's head. All right, so it's not slouchy or anything. It just pops over his head. And if you wanted to, you could pop a pom-pom right there. I don't have the time to make one. I'm very busy this week. <laughs> so no pom-pom for dads this week. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so what else did we use to make our beanie? We obviously used the skeins, yes. Uh, I did use a four millimeter hook and a five. I used a four millimeter hook to do the ribbing part, and then we changed to the five on the very first row of single crochets. I did like a base row, and then I started the moss stitch, but I used that five millimeter hook to do all of the moss stitch, all right? Uh, you will need your scissors, you will need one or two stitch markers, I think we only used one. You will need that sewing needle, but not a lot, because I show you how to carry the yarn. We use the same thread to sew this part, we use that same thread from the very bottom right to the very top. So this one thread only was left to weave in at the end. And one thread on top, which is the black one, one grey, one black up the top, down here is one black, over here on the inside is one grey and then we sewed our button on. Now I have used a wooden button, let me just get a nice close up of that wooden button for you, the lighting doesn't do it justice, I'm sorry guys. Let's try and get a nice close up, there it is, there's your button, alright. So it is a very nice button and again like I said, this is a gender friendly beanie so you can make that for the lady in your life as well so there you go guys i'm not going to talk too much because you know like most of my tutorials this does go for a long time and i just want you to go ahead and make your beanie good luck guys all righty guys we are going to start off by using our four millimeter hook you're going to grab your little tail end of your yarn and you're going to wrap it around your finger once and twice we are forming a slip knot so pop your finger there one there and one there Passing your back loop halfway over, hold it there. Passing the other loop all the way over, pop your hook in and give your work a tug. Yes? We're going to chain up 15 and a chain is a yarn over your hook. Oh, is that too far? I want you to see the stitch is black, it's a bit hard to see. So it's a yarn over your hook and pull a loop through once. Yarn over twice. Three times. Four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Now, what we're going to do is pop half double crochets across the row here. However, we want to have 15 half double crochets. So what we're going to do is chain up another two, one and two. Now, not including that stitch there, we're just going to go one and two. We're going to put a half double and a half double is a yarn over your hook. All right, so one and two in that top stitch there. So half double, pop it in a top stitch, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Just grab a stitch marker and let me get nice and close so you can see. I know it's a bit difficult, the black, sorry guys. Right, in there you'll have the two loops right there. There's two loops there, two loops there and one loop underneath. That's where I want you to pop your stitch marker, all right? That is your first half double crochet. So now, bring that out a little bit more. And we'll do that again all the way across the road. So it's yarn. Mm, I just took it out too much. Sorry, guys. Yarn over your hook. We're in this stitch right here. I'm going to jump right over into that stitch. Yarn over your hook. Pull up a loop. And you've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through all three loops on your hook. You know what? Don't do it so loose like that one there was. <laughs> okay. Yarn over. Pop it in the next stitch. Yarn over. Pull up your loop. Three loops. Yarn over pull through three okay so that is what you are going to do all the way across the row very simple guys easiest part of the tutorial is your next row because your next row all you're going to do is repeat that for like you know 14 billion rows I'm exaggerating by a few million of course but there you go all right here we go nearly there I know I say that in all my tutorials, don't I? I'm halfway through the road. <laughs> We're not anywhere near there. <laughs> all right, and yes, we are. We are. All right. So when we get across here, I'm going to show you how we're going to count these stitches too, by the way. So there's a second last stitch there. So just be weary about your stitches across. Right, there's one at the end. See right there? That is one. Pop your hook in. Pull a loop through. Yarn over. Pull through all three. Now I'm going to show you how to count your um, stitches so you know. All right, see these two loops right here? These two loops right here? That is one stitch and you've got one next to it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and the one in your stitch marker is fifteen. All right, super easy. Okay. All right, now we are chaining one and we are turning. Oh, I've just split that yarn, dearie me. Turn your work. See that stitch there? You're popping half double in the stitch, the whole stitch that's going through both the loops there. So it looks like a V. You're going through both those loops. So there's two loops on top. All right, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through three loops on your hook. Guess what? You're going to grab another stitch marker. So you've got one on each side. And again, this is for the newbies. Um, for the rest of us who know what we're doing, if you don't want to put a stitch marker, you don't have to. All right, now the rest of the row is different until you get to the last stitch. We are doing your half doubles, but we are doing them in a back loop only. Now let me just show you quickly the loop so you can see. And it might pay for you to turn your work when you're doing this part of your, your piece, okay? So here is a front loop right there. Yeah. And right behind it is a back loop. I don't know if you can see with the black, but there you go. There's your front, right there, and there's your back. It's starting, I'm starting to be able to see it now, okay? So I'll show you it anyway while we're doing it, so you know what you're looking for. So yarn over. We're already in this stitch, so we're not doing anything here. Pull your work forward, pop your hook under that back loop right there and do your normal half double crochet and do it again like that oh, here comes some sun that might help us a little <laughs> yarn over and there you go there's your front stitch 
and right behind it is your back stitch. All right, there's your front, and right behind it is your back. All right, I hope that's helped, and just pop that in the back loops all the way across this row. Don't do it in your last stitch, just in every other stitch until you get to the last stitch. All right, super easy. Well, it's not easy because it's black, but it is the stitch itself, it's quite easy. Um, newbies can do this, so if you are new to um, crochet, then you can do this. If you're new to our channel, welcome. <laughs> but if you're new to crochet, you can do this. All right, so there's um, you know a stitch marker there. Now, all the way through, we were popping our crochet in the last, the back loop. With our first stitch and our last stitch, we are going to pop them through both the loops. So get into that stitch, grabbing both your loops, doing your normal half double crochet. Take out that stitch marker. That is classified as your second row. We need one row there, and that's your second row. Now I'm talking about rows because you're going to need to count soon. So chaining one. Before you continue, count your stitches across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Why I ask you to count? All right. As we go along, if you mess up, say you put 13 in a row, you've skipped one stitch, your, your um, ridge is going to go like that. And then you might add one, it'll go like that, and it'll look all out of whack. Because it is the first part in front of you it's quite noticeable so if you were to make a mistake after the rib is done and you're doing the rest of the beanie that won't be as noticeable but this is right in front where your forehead is um, so it's quite noticeable so if you make it all crooked it will be noticeable so just be weary you don't want to have a crooked um, ribbing okay so there you go that's your first row your second we're going to turn our work okay best part now guys yarn over your hook pop your half double through both the loops in your first stitch grab your stitch marker pop it in there all right and two loops remember now you're doing them in the back loops again so if you're not sure how to do back loops just face it towards you you will be able to pop your hook down the front down the back if you know what I mean all right and that's what you're doing for this row all the way across until you get to your last stitch and then remember with the last stitch we pop them through both loops okay so this is just back loops all the way this is the best row of them all guys I think I mentioned might have been the one before but still <laughs> Okay, here we go. We're nearly there. Two more. One. And two. There is a stitch before that stitch marker right there. Alright, now with your stitch marker, what are you doing? You're just popping it through both loops and doing your half double. Chain one. Hold it there. Take out your stitch marker. Whoops, <laughs> that didn't work. Alright guys, best best part is that stitch there that row there that you just did don't forget to count it you're going to repeat that row over and over and over again until you reach between and let me get my measuring tape because I can't remember <laughs> yes I can I just can't remember the differences between them because I'm using both um, stitches here I'm using between 46 centimeters and 56 centimeters or between 18 inches and 22 inches and what you need is the basic adult beanie is 18 inches okay if you were to um, crochet for someone with a more larger circumference on their head then you would need to go right up to 22 inches however I figured if you go between 18 and 20 the beanie will actually stretch anyway to me I think that is that's fine um, so get between 18 and 22 
decide where you want to go. Um, I'm not sure where I'll go yet. I'll wait until I do my gazillion rows and see how I go. So all you're doing when you're finished, your 18 or whatever it is stitches, you just measure along there. If you measure to 18 inches or 46 centimeters without stretching it, which I'll show you in the next step, then that will be okay. So let's all head off on our own for now. Do, um, I don't know, gazillion rows. I would say roughly between 50 and 60 rows and measure and see where you are. You might need to do an extra 10 rows or eight rows or something, all right? So go ahead and do that and I shall meet you up. Ta-da! <laughs> Took a while, didn't it? <laughs> but it's all good. All right, so how do we know how big ours is, okay? It doesn't matter how many rows you did, so long as yours roughly measures between 46 centimetres and 56 centimetres or 18 inches and 22 inches. Mine's roughly roughly around 20 centimetres, uh, 20 centimetres, 20 inches or 50 inches, 50 centimetres, something like that. I'm not fussed too much because this particular pattern will stretch so it's better to be a little tiny bit smaller than 22 inches than the exact 22 unless you want a loose fitting beanie all right i want mine to fit nicely so i'm going to leave it like that now which side uh is the right side and which side is the wrong side well it doesn't matter with this stitch however if you want to be technical when we chained here we chained across then we turned and we did our first row of half doubles that is usually when you do your first row of anything that's usually the right side it doesn't matter but i'm going to stay consistent assuming that this is the right side so the right sides will be facing in so like that so we are now officially going to be working on the wrong side all right i hope that made sense all right now still working with your four millimeter hook turning your work because your threads will be over here will be on the side right here now this is a very tricky part not so much that it's tricky but you may not be able to see the stitches here because they're black <laughs> so what I'm going to do is try and make it as careful as I can I'll give you a really nice close-up just means you have to see my you know my bad fingers right now <laughs> all right so if you haven't chained your one at the end of the row chain your one okay pop your hook in your work on one side pop it in the opposite side through all loops pull a loop through there's two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops okay that is a single crochet now we're going to do them the rest of the row in the back loops except of course those last two stitches the reason we do that is because we need a little bit more uh, strength for the base and the top just to keep everything in place but for the rest, you can actually work in that back loop of that one there. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, very hard to find a back loop on your next stitch. So what you do is you just face it to you. I wonder if you can see what I'm doing here. All right, let's just do this. Leave that down there for a minute. Grab a needle. And I'll show you this way. That's the stitch we just worked into. This is the back loop. Oh, I'm splitting the yarn there, sorry. This is the back loop of the other side. Back loop of the other side. Back loop of the other side. Now, those are the loops we first worked into when we did our rows, if that helps you. Our very first row. So there's the back loop of this side. And right opposite where I stuck that pin is the back loop from the other side. And I'm doing a full single crochet in those stitches. All right back loop from this if it, if it helps you to face it towards you like that you can find the back loops a lot easier okay this one here should be the stitch that you actually went into okay so you shouldn't we'll just split that you shouldn't really miss it because that's the stitch that you went into the first row you did okay but it is easy to miss when you're using black hopefully not doing black <laughs> okay because i'm using black and it's terrible <laughs> right now oh dear all right so i'm gonna let you head off and do that yourself because if you sit here and watch me fuss with my little tight stitches we could be here forever <laughs> so just going to let you head off do that yourself 
um, I won't leave I'll just pop the um, video on speed and I will meet you up in a second all right second last stitch and second last stitch all right now with the last stitch it's oh, actually I think there's two there I do apologize there's another one right there there is another one oh I nearly missed that one didn't I it's your me it's a bit tricky really all you needed to do was make sure you had 15 stitches across I probably should have mentioned that before okay well, I'll just pop it up on the screen there <laughs> See this one here, you're putting it through both the loops, okay? A little bit tricky, a little bit tricky. There it is, we're done. Just pull up a loop, don't cut anything because we're still using this yarn. And turn it in the other way and have a look at it. And that's what you should have, all right? So whether or not you want this side looking at you, or whether or not you want that side, it doesn't really matter entirely up to you but yours truly is going to do the right thing and go the other way all right beautiful not exactly but still it's not bad <laughs> i'm being naughty now aren't I? all right here we go so this is the area where you need to change hooks go right up to your five millimeter hook guys all right we will need a five for this part okay so we have chained one already yes all right so now we're going to do a row of single crochets okay so you're going to pop your hook in the very first space you can find which i can see right there just give your work a bit of a stretch so you can see it and there it is pop your hook in pull up a loop yarn over pull through two that is your single crochet grab a stitch marker like so and there you go okay now you're going to go into the very next space you can see which is i don't know right there any space with a single crochet you see a space single crochet space single crochet and do that all the way across okay like so any space you see you're doing oh don't split the yarn like i've just done oh dear <laughs> Oh dear, don't do what I've just done. Oh, I've done it twice. Look at that. <laughs> I'm doing well. Oh dear. All right. So every space that you come to. All right. Now, the main deal about this row is to make sure by the end of the row that you have an odd amount of stitches. Okay. Very important. If you end up with an even amount, take one off or add one on. More better to add one on than to take one off because the next stitch can the moss stitch itself can come across as a very tight stitch so after this row we are starting a moss stitch all right so I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do this all the way probably the best thing for us to do now is to head off on your own do your gazillion single crochets all the way across get back to just before the stitch marker and I shall meet you up all right here we are at the end of the row guys i have a few spaces left to go okay all right so there's kind of like a little space there put a single crochet in there all right now that's still see where the chains the chains are actually coming out of that space so instead of slip stitching to that chain that we did we're slip stitching in the single crochet that we first did all right just to close up shop take out your stitch marker and there you go that's where we are at the moment all right so you have completed that first row now a lot of people don't put a row of single crochets um, for their first row I do I think it actually gives it a bit of a base row look but what we're going to do now is we are going to start our moss stitch now a moss stitch okay is to me is very very simple but a lot of people struggle to do it so it's literally we're going to chain one give that chain a real tug so it's nice and tight single crochet in that first stitch or the same stitch that we're in like that pop your stitch marker in there all right for now 
Now you're going to chain one. You're going to skip that first single crochet and you're going to jump into your second single crochet. All right, chain one. Skip the first, jump into your next. Chain one, skip, next. Chain one, skip, next. And what I want you to do is that all the way across the row. This is why I said you really needed to have some um, odd amount of stitches, okay? Because when you get to the end of the row, remembering to skip, don't forget, and remembering to chain one. When you get to the end of the row, if it doesn't add up, we will talk then. But in the meantime, single crochet, chain one, skip. Single crochet, chain one, skip. All the way through, I will meet you the last three or four stitches to help you out if there's any missing or whether we need to add some, all right? So I'll meet you up there. All righty, here we are at the end of the row. I have one, two, three stitches left. There's my single crochet. I chain one. I skip one, I jump into that middle stitch there. Now, if you don't have a stitch here, I would just create a chain one and slip stitch in. I would not leave it too tight. I would not leave um, the two of them together. I would just literally chain one, leave a space and then jump straight into that stitch marker with a slip stitch, not a single crochet, just a slip stitch. Pull that loop through there and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Take that stitch marker undone. All right. Now, ordinarily, we would cast off. We're not going to do that. We're going to carry the thread over so we don't have to have a gazillion ends at the end of the row. We're going to go straight into that space, drop your black, grab your grey, or whatever contrast colour you are using. Yours truly is using the darker grey. Okay, you can use a light grey, you can use cream, you can use whatever colour you like. Grab the grey, just pull the loop through like you're pulling a black through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Now grabbing the tail of the grey and your black loop, holding it there, just hold it there. You're chaining one. Give it a nice tight tug, then pop a single crochet in the same space. All right, chain one. Oops, I'm sorry. We should have put that stitch marker. Oh, let's take that chain undone. All right, now grab your stitch marker and pop it in your single crochet there because you're going to slip stitch in there at the end of the row. All right, chain one. Now, you're just going to find that next space. This is how easy the moss stitch is. Um, you're going to find that space and do... A single crochet in there chain one find your space single crochet in there chain one find your space single crochet in there super easy yeah space chain one space chain one making sure you're getting in the space and not in a stitch like I just did there <laughs> there it is right there's a space all right, we want to get in the space. You'll see it further along as you are going along with your um, black and grey. You'll be able to see the space is a lot easier. But look how basic this stitch is. So go ahead and do that all the way around. And how gorgeous is it looking already? I mean, you know, <laughs> get yourself around here somewhere, two or three stitches beforehand, and meet me up. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row. I have a few spaces left. So there's my one space there. Chain one. My very last space is right there. Chain one. Now we are going to slip stitch into that stitch where the stitch marker is. Super easy, guys. You're going to love this part. So we're slip stitching in there. I know I get really sing-songy, don't I, guys? <laughs> Alright, so guess what you're going to do? You're going to slip stitch over into the very next space, dropping your grey. I don't know if we can find it. Pop the greys at the back there. Grabbing your black, passing the loop through. Put the loop through onto the loop on your hook. Yes. Chaining one. Nice tight chain one. You're going to pop a single crochet in that same space, like so. Grabbing your stitch marker. 
yeah chain one skip jump into the space with a single crochet chain one skip jump into that space remember how I said you can see the spaces easier as you go along check that out oh very nice <laughs> I've gone all sing song you guys now we're in trouble <laughs> all right continue in that manner all the way across the row and I shall meet you up I mean gorgeous check it out very nice <laughs> okay all right get excited guys because what we're going to do is get to the end of this row and get ready for what's to come all righty guys here we are at the end of the row jumping into my next single crochet chain one jumping into the next one chain one and then we are slip stitching right into the top of that chain right there taking out our stitch marker whoops all right now remember what we're doing we're slip stitching into that very next space drop our black grab our gray pull that through there pull it through to the black chain one nice tight chain now single crochet in the same space chain one oops sorry we forgot to put that stitch marker in that first single crochet right there okay right there I'm a duffer aren't I okay and now you're just jumping over because I've already done my chain one into the space chain one single crochet chain one single crochet chain one single crochet you guessed it chain one and single crochet I know it's a super easy stitch so this is your best part guys I knew you're gonna love this row because what I'm going to do now is tell you two two or three things first thing first is whilst you are doing this being careful with your yarn already it's happened to me because you are pulling your yarn through and going the other way and you're coming back around again you're pulling your black through and you're going the other way and then you come back and you're pulling your gray through it starts to do that make sure you are untwisting as you go or you will end up uh, with a knot and your yarns can eventually break okay rip shed sometimes it frays a little so be very careful when working that way now having a careful look at your work these are all the tips you need to know before continuing if your work is looking like this where <laughs> all that is quite tight and your beanie is really loose like that then you don't have enough single crochets in the round if your work is looking really wide then you have too many single crochets there's no right or wrong answer however have a careful look at the way this is sitting you want it to sit rather flat have a tiny little curve not a lot just a tiny curve now because after a while it'll start curving that a little bit more um, and that's okay because you know obviously we get smaller towards the top of our head so that's okay um, that's the second tip be careful of your stitches making sure they're even okay the third tip is if you wanted to oh, sorry I wasn't prepared for that third tip I do apologize you could add another color what that's correct yours truly is not I'm going to stay with the gray but if you wanted to add the third color always add the third color after you use your main color so you've got your black and you've got your gray and you've got your black and then you've got maybe this color and then you've got a black and then you go back to your gray then you've got a black so always pop the black in between so you get that nice brickwork look and let me tell you doesn't matter how many colors you put in you can put a different color in every second row as long as your main row is black okay so that's another tip that's pretty much all the tips I have guys now where do we go from here I thought you'd ask <laughs> I thought you'd ask let's get our measuring tape all right so we're grabbing our measuring tape pop your little work to the side okay this is where we are at the moment we are on 11 mm, dear. let's try that that's better we I'm sorry about the enlarged fingers there we're on uh, 11 centimeters or four you know four and a quarter inches right where we need to be with our beanie is 
Okay, let's move that over so you can see. Sorry, bring that down a bit. From the top of your beanie down to the bottom, you need to be at 23 centimetres roughly or nine inches. Meet me back here when you get to your measurement and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> how gorgeous does it look I know I know I know oh I love 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 all right let's check with measurements yes all right okay here we go from there to there roughly nine inches or 23 centimeters I've got a nice gloss up for you and there you go yeah 23 centimeters nine inches well, roughly roughly so from there to there it's rough um, we are still going to do a few more rows, but not in the complete stitch that you see. These are rows that we're going to close up a little bit and make that a little bit tighter. Now, by the time we're finished, we'll end up with about 10 inches, which is okay, because you're going to lose one or one and a half inches, maybe two inches when we scrunch up anyways. So that's okay. That's okay. This is where we want to be, roughly on nine inches at the moment. All right? Perfect. All right, so now... If you can, which I would really suggest, finish off on your non-dominant colour, which was the grey, because we used the black as the dominant colour. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, where was I? I've chained one, all I had to do was slip stitch into there, pull the loop through, and then slip stitch into the space, dropping my grey, grabbing the black, pulling the black through, to the loop on your hook, giving it a nice tight tug, chain one and single crochet in the same space. All right, so now what we're going to do, because we are decreasing, we are not going to be chaining in between each stitch, okay, because we're going to tighten up our rows. So all we're going to do is jump into the next space with a single crochet. Do the same with the next. Now this is going to literally um, make the whole work scrunch up a little which is what you want um, because we are going to be closing that up the top in a minute Ugh, if i can get that stitch that's not working for me there we go all right so just continue with single crochets all the way across how'd you go didn't take too long <laughs> not really all right here we go there and there's our stitch all right so we didn't put a stitch marker but that's okay because we've only got you know it's not that difficult to see that first stitch being the fact that it's when you know, we're changing colors now we're not going to slip stitch the gray the black through just pass it over we're going to slip stitch the gray through like so and like so and just give everything a big tug chain one and in that same space you are putting a single crochet one all right pop your black down because you're going to need your black for later just get a nice close-up so you can see what's going to happen here we're going to be doing single crochet two together okay which means we're grabbing both those single crochets and we're going to single crochet them together so you pop your hook in one pull a loop through pop it in the other pull a loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops so not there but the stitch right next to it so that's where our last stitch came out of go into that next stitch with a normal single crochet all right so the next one is single crochet two together one two three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three the next one you are single crocheting all right easy this way that's all we're doing
right how do we go guys almost there single crochet two together it's the last you should end up with the two together on your last stitch because that was single crochet one okay slip stitch oh, into that nice tight stitch <laughs> whoops we are slip stitching the black through so drop your gray and grab your black pulling your black through there and pulling it through the loop on your hook all right so this is what this is where you should be so it should be kind of curling up like that that is normal don't think this is not right it is normal because we want that to start closing up and we are going to sew in um, our end later as well all right so chain one single crochet in the same space same stitch now see all these single crochets you've got there you are going to single crochet two together again and then one so you're just repeating that row one more time okay alrighty we are at the end of this row popping your hook in that nice tight stitch there <laughs> oh I'm sorry we're pulling through the gray aren't we <laughs> oh you think I'd get this right by now all right we're pulling through the gray all the way through Ugh, I really should have pulled the black up it doesn't really matter I'll do the same with the gray single crochet I mean chain one single crochet all right guess what one more time single crochet two together chain one i'm sorry single crochet one <laughs> i'm not i'm not focused single crochet two together oh, i need to sleep guys i really do such a busy week <laughs> all right um single crochet one single crochet two together single crochet one single two it's kind of tightening up a little bit now so it's harder to work with single one single two single one and then oh boy really awkward to work with now single two and single one single two Oh, very very tight and single one and I've messed up a stitch somewhere along the way so you know what we're gonna do just gonna pop a single in there <laughs> it doesn't matter all right now we're just going to slip stitch over and we're going to slip stitch right over into the black okay and this will be the last slip stitch we make so you find I probably should have put a stitch marker in this one because it's relatively tight this one whoops and we want to slip stitch the black through we're going to cut that gray in a second okay pull the loop through and to the loop on your hook give your gray a bit of a tug chaining one and single crochet in the same space all right now we're going to cut that gray now because it's only going to be annoying so give your gray a cut and that's the end of that you won't be seeing that one anymore yay <laughs> now all you're doing with this row no more two togethers you're just single crocheting all the way across all right so single crochet in your first or well, maybe we should have put a stitch marker in that one hey 
doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can work it out. <laughs> Pop a stitch marker in if you want. I'm not going to do it. I'm getting lazy. <laughs> All right, single crochet all the way across. All the way across, like so. Get excited, guys, because we're nearly finished a beanie. Yay, nearly finished. Oh, very awkward to work with now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you had one job Mary just to finish off the beanie let's go you can do this <laughs> we have faith in you they're saying <laughs> do you all right here we go nearly there mm -hmm. oh, one more nope there's more I'm spinning this beanie around but it's never finishing what's going on with this rope <laughs> feels like it's never ending <laughs> there and there oh here we go we're at the end was that a stitch yes it is dearie me all right here we are now you're going to grab that slip stitch into the top of that black one the first one we did very first stitch pull the loop through pull up a loop now what you want to do here is you want to pull up a fairly long loop even if it's too long it's better too long than not long enough because you're going to use this thread to sew up this space right here all right that's oh, already out okay so it's only a fairly small space so it's not that big at all it's very very tiny so your best thing to do right now firstly turning it inside out and grabbing that gray end Move the black right out the way. We don't need that anymore. Just grabbing your grey because you're going to have to weave that in before you start anything. Otherwise, it's just going to be annoying. All right. Now, remember, we don't tie knots in our work for um, here at Wild Crochet. So you really have to make sure you weave that in well. All right. So just grab some grey anywhere you like. It doesn't really matter because you won't be able to see the threads coming through anyway all right because that's going to be all closed up so don't worry too much if you don't have it in the right spots or anything just pop it through anywhere oh that tail's not long enough here we go let's bring that out short enough I meant to say not long enough short enough all right now just go in and out in different directions different areas anywhere you like nobody's going to see it not inside nor out so usually I say, oh, be careful not to let it show in the front and this and that. But don't worry about it. It's not going to be a problem. So notice how I've weaved it in two, three times. Yes. Oh, really tight now. <laughs> um, that won't ever come undone. All right, for starters. Um, and then secondly, we're going to weave in that black one. So pop your work back in the normal side. Back to normal. All right. okay there you go there's another gray end here that's the bottom one we're going to weave that in later don't worry too much about that now we're going to do this black thread up the top very quick and easy by the looks of it we have closed it up fairly small um, so it won't take too long to weave all that in all right so here we are okay all right I've used black I probably should have done this in a different color <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be really hard for you to see guys but I will try my best all right so literally all you're doing is grabbing your thread and popping it in and out of your stitching and you can probably see it happening now yes so you're going in one way back through the other in one back through the other all right so you're doing that all the way around so maybe do two or three in a row you don't need to give it a tug you can if you want and it will start closing up already but you don't need to we're not ready to do that yet so in another back or should say in and out in and out and in and out all the way across and again I said it shouldn't take long because it's a relatively small space that we're going through so in out and you're just going around the single crochets 
if you want to give it a tug to see how it closes up perfect yes so that's what you're going to do you're going to actually not go through that way what we're going to do is literally it's already closed up so it's fine but we'll still go in and out a little bit there and there I think we're at the other end on your last one pop your needle through and that goes right through to the inside of your beanie yes so we're going to work on the inside now so give that a big tug yeah turning your work inside out for a minute all right it's tiny as yes, and you can't really see it but if you don't tighten this up really well that will open up over time okay so you really have to literally all you're doing is going across that way across that way turn your beanie a little bit go across that way across that way turn it again and just keep doing your crosses all the way so that's what we're going to do we're just going to go right across this way like so give it a tug back the other way so you're going in and out up and down in any way you like I find it easier just to turn your beanie millimeters or a centimeter if you will a tiny little bit every time you do it so no matter which way you're looking at it you do it twice on one side different area of course yeah oops then turning it a little bit and doing it again so it's actually going through every angle that it possibly can and to be honest with you this would probably be enough but I'm going to keep going for oh, oh it's really tight now <laughs> so I'm going to keep going what I will do is do it this way now we're going the opposite direction there you go and just going in and out in every direction you want now because you've done the hard part the gap is closed up so there's no gap okay easy easy now the rest is easy easy oh, it's very tight though <laughs> I think we're done oh look at that that didn't work I actually think we are done <laughs> maybe not it's not gonna let me do it <laughs> well that's good it means there's no way this is gonna come undone okay so that's it you probably didn't need such a long tail sorry guys <laughs> although we could use that tail to do the button because we're gonna do the button in a minute turn it in the right way and there you go if you looked at it from the top that's what you're looking at yeah gorgeous very nice all closed up shop now a lot of people and I know I probably would have in the past pop a pom-pom right up there and that's great I'm not going to do that today because we are going to focus on uh, finishing off the beanie as quickly as we can since Father's Day is actually this Sunday coming <laughs> I have left it to the last minute haven't I all right so we're gonna pop the button on now, uh, best place to put your button, there's your tail end. That's why we haven't weaved that in yet, because I wanted to make sure that ends up at the back. So just give it a nice flatten there. And just roughly, roughly pop your hand there and, you know, get the middle. Flip the work. Your back should be underneath there, and your front should be right there. Now, you can put the button anywhere you like. I'm just going to pop it right there. We are going to start love this button it is a wooden button so they're not the cheap ones they're the good ones <laughs> now do you want your buttonholes to look like that or do you want them to look like that traditionally they uh, really should look like that it doesn't matter you can pop them any way you like I found it would have been better to do this way because we have the ridge that we can sew on but it doesn't really matter so anywhere you like the button has no right or wrong way in fact take the button off for a minute just find yourself a couple of fingers up there and just pop it through like I said it doesn't matter it's your piece okay oh, that's probably too low <laughs> I said it doesn't matter but I don't want it too low there you go that's a good place to put it now leave yourself a little bit of tail there grab your button pop it through one side yes pop it through oh let's get a close up so you can see what I'm doing pop it through the other side so it's in one side pop it back through the other side yes then 
you're just going to find a little spot a few millimeters difference you know like the button pop the needle through being careful not to go through this thread and just pop it through and your button should kind of sit into place just pull both your threads and your button should sit into place if you're not happy with that the way it's sitting take it undone now this is the time to take it undone all right let's have a look I'm happy with where it is that's where it's gonna stay oh before you do grab your threads and tie two knots one what that's just gonna do is lock the button into place doesn't matter if it's not as straight as you want it to be it'll just lock it into place so it doesn't move around when you start doing this part here this part very simple uh, we'll bring that up again and pop it this way so you can see better oh no, you can't i can't work that way <laughs> there you go i'm trying to help you and i can't work that way so you're just popping your needle through to the other side of one of the spaces of your button all right there's one making sure you're not tingling all this yarn that you've just pulled through oh i'm very fiddly this part's always very fiddly for me the sewing bit anyway there you go pop that through that way we're going to do it one more time it doesn't need to be done a lot as long as it's in at least twice or three times and guess what you're not finished there you are going to do another knot. Why? Well, why not? <laughs> why not? Now, if you wanted to, you could just cut this knot and leave tiny, tiny little tails so that in the future, if you wanted to change the button or take the button off and use it for something else, as you do, like I do many times, but don't tell anyone, you could. <laughs> now, turning it inside out, well, actually working on the inside, you are just weaving in this end through any thicknesses you see now it doesn't have to be perfect like I said earlier the you might want to remove this button I'm gonna leave the button there but still it doesn't have to be completely perfect all right just in and out anywhere you like just three times because you've already knotted it twice and that one there is done it's like anything we weave in everything grab your needle let's just pretend like you weaved all that in <laughs> i don't want you to sit there and watch me doing it <laughs> you guys can head off on your own and do it right <laughs> oh i'm so naughty now what you need to do you need to weave in all these ends ta-da <laughs> oh how do you like that guys nice <laughs> very nice i like it a lot and we did it just in time for father's day so you've got something to give dad on father's day this sunday so there you go guys thank you so much for watching <laughs> don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you do for me and don't forget to join us on wednesday afternoons live at 4 p.m or saturday mornings live at 10 a.m so that we can discuss all our tutorials that we have done this week now this week's a very busy week for us we have done so much so far and it's only been two days <laughs> <laughs> so we are still very busy we've got another three tutorials to pump out this week i don't know how we're going to do it but there you go <laughs> if you are joining us new i just wanted to show you the difference here between beanies these are both beanies made for um the man in your life yes now this beanie here as you can see it looks smaller but actually isn't it fits the head perfectly this one here is a beanie that you either roll up yes or you leave it slouchy, like it sits at the back and drops at the back. Now, you would have seen my son um, wearing both this one and this one online. <laughs> I needed a young model. <laughs> he was in the room at the time. So there you go. If you wanted to make this beanie, I'll leave a link to this beanie in the description box down below. So you have a choice of beanies to make for Dad. Now, get this. These yarns are exactly the same. They are left over. These two skeins are left over from this beanie, okay? And I thought, what am I going to do with them? What am I going to do with them? And I created this and I still have probably 80 or 90 grams left. So I can actually make another beanie with that. Yeah, maybe something may come in the future, but how gorgeous do these colours look? And how interesting how you've got two different patterns that gives it two different looks of the same yarn. They, they look like they're different yarns, but they're 
they're not. They're exactly the same. I mean, how gorgeous is that? Let's pop that one out the way. If you wanted to make that one, I've left a link to that one in the description box down below. But there you go. There's our gorgeous beanie for Father on Father's Day. He hasn't missed out. <laughs> we haven't missed out. Happy Father's Day. Ciao for now.